Good tester. Here we go. Round one. This is for real now. This is for all the marbles. Best Batman. Uh, to, to help... Uh, uh, to start this off, Mr. John Daly, come on out! <laughs> See? And we did uh, pre-select him a little earlier. Garrett Finn, come on up! <laughs> Garrett and John, you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe on the best Batman. Are you guys ready? I was more ready. All right. <laughs> Let's do this. John, why don't you start? Batflake. Ben Affleck's Bat Batman. All right. Garrett. Kevin Conroy. Yeah. Whoa, okay. That made serious. All right, John, you can start. Well, let's think about this for a second. Ben Affleck was actually Batman. Kevin Conroy is the voice of Batman. And this is movie fights, not TV fights. The only good version of Batman that Kevin Conroy did was an animated series on television. Not on the big screen. And any Batman animated movie, don't get me wrong, I love Kevin Conroy because he sounds great. But have you ever seen him? He's an opie looking mofo with a polo shirt on. And the only reason he sounds like Batman is because he smokes four packs of cigarettes a day. I really thought a voice actor would have preached. Oh, I would, but I lost the coin toss. I would, but I lost the coin toss. I picked Kevin Conroy because he has been the definitive voice of Batman for nearly 25 years. You say this is in TV fights. What about Mask of the Phantasm, one of the best representations of the characters? It's also has the actual run. What about Batman the Killing Joke? What about Batman the Killing Joke? What a poor special! That ruined the movie for me! I believe that was Bruce King's call. And what about Batfleck, where he straight up murders people? Yeah, he straight up murders people. That's right. He does actual detective work. Not like all the other What do you mean he does detective work? He was the only good part of Suicide Squad. Where he busted into Lex Luthor's house and got got ripped off by Wonder Woman. He's like, oh, I have my flash drive. And she told him. And she took it from him. It sounds like a pretty awful detective. Let me do a little something for you. In a world where everyone thought that Batman would be the worst part of Superman vs. Batman, and he was the only good thing in the movie. Apparently <laughs> not good enough to turn that movie into a villain, though. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Can they find a billion dollars? He's been voicing the character for 25 years. Yeah, he keeps getting replaced. And if he quits smoking, he's out of a job. I disagree. Of that Have you ever seen him in a cow? He's like this big. Have you seen Ben Affleck? That dude got jacked for that movie. And let's face it, when you went to see Suicide Squad, what's going on, that was the only part of the movie that you really loved was when you saw him on the screen. I would argue that Deadshot was also a good part of that movie. Lots eh, of I'm well, when the French Prince of Bel Air puts on a suit, I guess he's okay. <laughs> he was in that movie for Tuesday. Yeah, and, and he was the only good thing in the movie. That's my point. I'm thinking you're making my point with me. I would say that's more of your opinion. Alright, keep it on Batman. Why is he the best Batman? Go ahead. Why is he the best Batman? He takes out the most interesting part of the Batman, which means he doesn't kill people and he has this moral code. And Ben Affleck murders people. And also, in the Batman vs. Superman fight, the name of the movie, he gets taken out because his boyfriend says Martha. So, I would like my Batman to have like a little bit more going for him than just if he says mom needs to give it up. John, why is he the best Batman? He's the best Batman because he looks the character. He is the character. He was he proved everybody wrong. Everybody said he was gonna suck. They looked at Daredevil, looked at Batman vs. Superman, and said this is gonna be horrible. Guess what? Everybody loved him. And by the way, Kevin Conroy has no career without cigarettes. All I'm saying is, bet back like an unfork back girl. <laughs> Oh, all right. Do you have anything else to add, or are we calling it? Uh, Last was, thought? That wasn't Kevin Conroy's call. That was Bruce Timm's call. It wasn't, it wasn't Batman's call to say Martha, was it? That was the director. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could drop this mic, but I want to pick right now. Even the Martha moment, there are still so many problems wrong with Ben Affleck, even, even the thing that he murders people. And if, if he murders people, he doesn't have his compass. That's you forget, this is the DC's part. version of the Justice League. They don't care. They kill everybody. <laughs> All right, last thought, Garrett. If it's DC's version, then he should be the perfect version of Batman. So much money goes into these movies, and the fact that he's just 
okay. Because with Batman, you have different levels of the character. With Bruce Wayne, the detective, and Batman, he was obviously a terrible detective because Wonder Woman took his flash drive and he was like, oh, where'd it go? And she drove away. <laughs> and Batman murders people. So he's just a crazy guy in a suit that straight up murders people. That's not my Batman. And he was an decent Bruce Wayne for what, two minutes of screen time we saw him then. My character has been voicing this character for 25 years and was in the Ant-Man series, was in Justice League, was in the Justice League movies and the Arkham games, which are really renowned games. No, no, this is movie fight! Final thought, John. Okay, this is movie fights. Yes, Kevin Conroy is the great voice of Batman. He's never even put on the cowl. He's never been on screen as Batman. So yeah, that should be points off right there. And by the way, he was a great voice of Batman on television, on Fox Kids. Yeah. Mask of the Phantasm. That had a really All right, time! <laughs> Woo! Oh, it went a little over the place, but uh, you, got to, you got to hear a lot in there. You guys can help us vote now. If you want to vote for Garrett and Kevin Conroy, lift up the white side. If you're voting for Batfleck and John, lift up the black side. Sadly, John, it looks like you're out. That's a lot of white. <laughs> it, that didn't work. <laughs> Garrett, you move on to the next round. Wow, first fan win. Congrats, Garrett. So the winner, uh, so we got Garrett, you're coming back up. And Hal Rudnick, right? You won the lot. Yeah, come on up, Hal. Uh, by the way, uh, that last fight, it was Kyle and Ken, and uh, I just uh, wanted to say, uh, uh, hey, Kyle, they killed Kenny. <laughs> you bastards! <laughs> nice. Here we go, round five. <laughs> Best sequel that's better than the original. T2 Judgment Day. Oh! Empire Strikes Back versus Terminator 2. Go ahead, Garrett, you can start us. So, the question is better than the original film. And the Empire Strikes Back is the definition of better than the original film because Darth Vader is in the original movie, but this is really when you see Darth Vader as who he is. You get some of the best moments in Star Wars, period, and it's just it's better than the original in almost every single way. Terminator is a good film. T2 is a technological marvel and a masterpiece. It's James Cameron at the height of his powers. It's one of the greatest villains of all time. The T-1000, its effects from the early 90s that hold up today. That is revolutionary. One of the best female protagonists you're ever gonna see, Sarah motherfucking Kana. <laughs> one of his great performances as an anti-hero. And some of the best quips and humor infused into an action movie that you're ever gonna wanna see. That movie, it is head and shoulders above the original and one of the great genre films of all time. Derek. To me it says, what your argument said, is that what makes that movie the most arguable, or the most uh, better than The Empire Strikes Back would be the villain. But if you're gonna put out the T-1000 against Darth Vader, I'm sorry, my friend, but you just lost hard. Um, let, me, let me remind you, Garrett, what the question is. Movie that's better than the original. Star Wars is a pretty damn good movie. Star Wars A New Hope is a pretty damn good movie. Terminator's an okay movie. The, the leap between Terminator to Terminator 2 is is much bigger. The fight is not about the, the length of the leap. It's just simple, which was better than the original. And Empire Strikes Back is better than Star Wars. The, the, yeah, the, go ahead, Garrett. Go ahead. This Hal talk a lot. Hal talk a lot. Yeah, so you said the film was great. You say the special effects are great because it held up this long. And Star Wars came out in 1980. And those effects still hold up really freaking well. And you're talking about the female protagonist. 
What about Princess Leia? Carrie Fisher's right here. Where's Sarah Connor? Help me, help me, Luke. Help me, Obi Wan. You're my only hope. That's that's asking for uh, that's asking for Sarah Connor. I believe that's the first movie. That's exactly the first movie. Talk about if you're referring to the first movie and how weak the protagonist is, Sarah Connor is so freaking weak. Kyle Reese is saving her the entire movie. She offers. I'm just talking about you said you held Princess Leia aloft as someone, and you're holding Sarah Connor aloft. Yeah, because she kicks major ass. The, the question is, which film is better than the original? That and I'm saying, Garrett, let me finish for a moment. That <laughs> I'm gonna let you that, finish. That te the the length, the the distance between T2 and the first one is far greater than Empire Strikes Back and Star Wars. Star Wars is Star Wars one is, is one of the major groundbreaking films of all time. Empire Strikes Back, I will agree, is better than Star Wars, but T2 took just leaps and bounds over the first one. And, and let me tell you this. <laughs> no, shut up, Garrett. You, you yourself just admitted that Star Wars is one of the greatest films of all time, and Empire Strikes is better than that film. Then that means Empire Strikes Back, by default, is one of the greatest movies of all time. But if you have Star Wars, which is apparently such a fantastic movie, for it to be better than that is a testament to how damn good this movie We're is. We're talking about... <laughs> We're, we're talking about the chasm between the two movies. You, you, you're not going to admit to me that the chasm... Are we, are we talking about the chasm? Yes. <laughs> what, what is the question? Best sequel. It's better than original. You're running out of time now. Hurry yes. up. Um, let me just tell you this. Not only is it so much better than Terminator in every way, it also won four Academy Awards. Okay? For visual effects, for sound design. Okay, we don't need to listen to that. <laughs> Last thought, Garrett. So, the argument with Oak breaks down to the better movie. My movie has better characters, to have better score, and I feel some love for John Wayne. <laughs> better villain, better uh, female protagonist with Princess Leia. And you're talking about the humor, what about Han Solo? Han Solo is hilarious in that movie. And you have the introduction to Yoda! In Time! Time! Wow! All right, you guys are voting. You guys are in charge here. Hold up the white card for Garrett, the black card for Hal. Garrett slayed you, Hal. Oh, man. He's even wearing the shirt. Nice work, Garrett. All right. Dan, stay up here, because you're going up against Garrett. Oh, my goodness. Now, Garrett, admit something. This has been a dream of yours to always tackle Dan, huh? <laughs> well, you earned it. You made it all the way through the gauntlet. Round of applause for Garrett. <laughs> Screen Junkies Plus member and all. Congrats, dude. You made it here on your own. All right. You're going against Dan. But we're going to do something fun. This is called a blind fight. So you got to pick the best movie franchise out of two options that I have here on cards. Dan, Garrett, we each pick one, and then you'll have to be forced to argue the positive merits of these two franchises. Right, so Does everyone understand? This is the better, best movie. Franchise. I don't want to hear that these are bad franchises. You're defending these are the best franchises. <laughs> Do we understand the rules here? Absolutely. This is a little bit different. You're arguing that this is the best franchise. So I'm even going to chime in here. If you hear one of them admitting failure to their own franchise, let's give it in. You got to say these are the best franchises, all right? Dan, what did you get? This is going to be so easy. Let's hear it for Twilight! <laughs> Garrett! Can I see some love for Transformers? Oh, it's Twilight versus Transformers. What is the best franchise? Because they're both so fantastic. <laughs> Dan Merle? Yes. Who doesn't love romance? Am I right? <laughs> Not only romance, but eternal romance. And that's what Twilight has to offer. It is an eternal romance between two of the best romantic protagonists of our time. Of course, I'm talking about Edward and Bella. Robert Pattinson himself. We all love Robert Pattinson. Kristen Stewart. And you have the love triangle, Taylor Lautner. Boy, he took over the world, didn't he? Everyone loves Taylor Lautner. Here's what I'm saying. 
You got werewolves, you got vampires, you got action, you got romance, you have intrigue, you're going all over the world. So much going on in these movies. So so much good stuff going on, they had to split the last one into two movies. That's how popular <laughs> these movies were. They made an extra movie because people love these movies so much. Gary, Transformers. My series, Transformers, is based off of one of the most beloved things out there, which would be Transformers. And this is the only live action adaptation of that. And you get an amazing, super entertaining four movies that is directed by one of the best directors of our time, Michael. <laughs> yeah, really fun and entertaining performances with Shia LaBeouf and Mark Wahlberg. Like, what a great talent he is, right? <laughs> and it appeals to international audiences with uh, China and everything. And these series are still totally strong. And I cannot wait for this new movie. And Dinobots! No, listen, uh, you've got uh, four Transformers movies. They're all basically the same. I defy you to find me the kind of intriguing story that you follow through all of the Twilight movies. <laughs> all five of them. Bella going from a lonely, underage high school student to Mary to an immortal vampire. Now, this is the kind of intrigue you're not going to find in a, a Transformers movie. You know what intrigue you do find? You get fighting robots. And Michael Bay knows how to do a lot of stuff well, but one of the best things, the things he's best at is directing action with great CGI. With your movies, it's based off of Fifty Shades of Grey fan fiction. That's not true. Fifty Shades of Grey was based off of Twilight fan fiction, and that's a pretty popular movie too, isn't it, folks? That's how good Twilight is. No way, even when it's not Twilight. So, retroactively, Twilight gave us Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm just making sure I got that right. Just making sure that I have them to thank for that. Fact check, that's true. Fifty Shades of Grey has brought a lot of pleasure to a lot of lonely housewives. Yeah. I'm not going to be grudged. A lonely lady at home in the middle of the day finding a little solace in a book. I, I, I don't know. I don't find anything wrong with that. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Uh, I think that Twilight brought a lot of joy to a lot of uh, uh, teenagers, brought a lot of joy to a lot of young people. It revolutionized the world of Comic-Con. Boy, we all know what it's been like since uh, Twilight showed up. It opened it up to a whole so new universe of people. Twilight cosplays, am I right? And, right, I, and yeah. I also think that, you know, Transformers is... Uh, you know, fun. No, it's fun. It's not. The it's first one was kind of fun. It's the same movie four times. The only difference is they just keep getting longer. Twilight has a story. You go through. It starts. It ends. The the, the series is over. We are not just going to keep getting Twilight movies forever, which is great because all good things should come to an end. Uh, <laughs> and Transformers, we're just going to keep getting them when everything's been said about it. I will go for a good romance any days of the week than an ad nauseum barrage of bright lights and fighting robots. I don't see movies coming out continually as a negative thing because obviously people love these movies. Transformers 4 was one of the highest grossing movies of that year. So it has a... International. There's still humans too, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's because my so, my story is so sophisticated. It doesn't need toys for people to understand it. Right? <laughs> And you have Optimus Prime, which is a, better than any character in that series combined. Yeah, well, Optimus obviously, Prime. you don't know much about the love triangle between <laughs> Edward and Bella and Jacob. I defy you to not get more involved in that love triangle than you do with fighting robots. I don't robots. think anyone can get involved in that love triangle. I know I a lot of people would like to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final thought, Garrett. The love triangle I want to see is between Shia LaBeouf, Apple <laughs> and Optimus Prime. <laughs> You've got explosions, you've got fun, you've got humor, you've got international appeal, and they keep, they keep making these movies. And because they make a lot of money, and they sell a lot of toys, and they have a big backing. Whereas Twilight was shot dead because no one liked it, and they're a god of movies. That's not true. People love the movies. They made more and more money as they went along. It ended on a high note, as opposed to your movies, which are slowly declining, I'm my friend. the title of the last movie. It was Breaking Dawn parts one and two. I've seen them all multiple times. That is true. Let's be honest. What do we do? Round of applause. That's our kind of show. All right, guys. This is for all the marbles. You guys are going to have to vote here. I need you all to tell me.
Who won the fight? Better franchise, based on the arguments. Best franchise. White cards for Transformers and Garrett. Black cards for White. Twilight and Dan. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, I, I confirm with the pit boss. It looks like to us, both of us, Garrett wins! Wow, that was an unexpected turn. Dan Merrill, though, won a round, round of applause for Mr. Dan Merrill, as well as Mr. Hal Rudnick. Hal Rudnick, Ken Knapsack, John Bailey, come on up here, guys. Thank you so much. Now, guys, we're going to do a meetup right here. So if you want to come talk, take a photo, get an autograph, we're here for you. We just need to start a line. So start a line so we can get through you all. And uh, thank you guys for coming so much. And make sure you check out Screen Junkies Plus. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Uh, fact checker, Twilight has toys. I know. Twilight does have toys. Sure do. <laughs> she, she owns them all. <laughs> All right, bye guys, that was it. Live from Chicago. Woo!